Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today we're just jumping back into another episode of Road to Ranked. If you haven't seen the one yesterday, definitely go check it out. But basically, I'm trying to basically post a couple more videos in the upcoming weeks, and the Sun series is wrapping up within the next week, but or sorry, next month. Um, but I want to just play some other teams and try out some cool stuff. And if you guys have suggestions, definitely let me know in the comments below as always. Um, I'm definitely open to like trying out uh, your guys' teams as well, especially like if you are able to upload it via QR code. So uh, kind of talk about that going into the upcoming weeks, but for now I'm just going to try out some other stuff that I personally think is still good. Um, so I've been using this Evil Tall Xerneas team obviously in yesterday's episode. We're going to see how it goes today. And uh, thank you to everyone who watched yesterday's episode. I know I've been gone for a while, but appreciate all the support and all the uh, positive words and kind comments that you guys always have. So. Uh, this is interesting. We were going up against an opposing Evatol, but there's a Slurpuff, which I haven't seen since like VGC 2014. Um, so that is definitely an odd sight. Otherwise, uh, Evatol Kyogre, uh, Lele. Um, we've got pretty similar teams, obviously, with four of the six same, but he's got the Slurpuff and the Kyogre. Um, so, I mean, Xerneas is quite good here. Does have to worry about the Amoongus, that's the main threat. Um, so I'm going to want to bring my Lele. I'm going to bring Evatol to Xerneas for sure. And I feel like the Cortana is a pretty safe last option. Um, the main question is just who I want to lead with. Lele Xerneas feels pretty safe though, because my Lele is scarfed and puts on immense pressure against both Kyogre and Evoltal. Um, yeah, I don't want to Moongus here because my opponent has that Lele. Uh, and Incineroar, it's not the best against a Kyogre. Did I lock in? Oh no. I might not have locked in. If not, like, this will be in for a challenge, uh, but we'll see how it goes. As always, if you guys enjoy Road Train, please share your support by leaving a like, I'd appreciate it. And uh, I, I thought I had more time there, but <laughs> maybe I didn't get my Pokemon choices in in time, so let's see. Uh, okay. So we do get the Lord Laser Arceus, which is at least the lead that I really wanted, uh, as it's going to be Lele and Slurpuff. Um, I honestly don't even know what Slurpuff does, other than, like, Belly Drum. Um... I haven't faced it in so long. It's gonna be a Psychic Seed Slurpuff. Interesting. Okay. Who do I have in the back? Evil Tongue Cortana. Okay, so we're good. Um. I, mean, I kind of want to just Psy Shock and move last Slurpuff. It does get it gets Trick Room, right? I haven't played against one in so long. Um. I'm just gonna Psyshock Moonblast because I just don't know what it does. And it's gonna go for Helping Hand, interesting. Okay. Well, then a Geomancy would have definitely been better there, but I'd rather just take care of the thing that I really am unfamiliar with. Um, I mean, it could be a Helping Hand like Psyshock and Desernius, which would be kind of bad, I guess. But at least I knocked out Serpo. That was like a free Geomancy, but I guess if it was Psyshock, which was coming out, then Geomancy wouldn't have given me the boost that mattered anyway. And that just one-shots me, so I gotta wonder if that's Spex or not. Uh, Evil Tull, sorry, Cortana, definitely the Pokemon I want to be bringing out right now. Yeah, so Geomancy actually wouldn't have helped there, um, hilariously enough. So, pretty cool to see... I, I'm like I'm almost sure that's Spex lately. I don't think Psyshock would be knocking me out normally, otherwise. Um, which means by bringing out... Like, if my opponent brings out Kyogre or Evil Tull... Um, he should know I'm choiced at this point, or she, excuse me, should know I'm choiced because um, my Lele went first before Xerneas. But maybe my opponent... I, I mean, yeah, you could also think maybe my Xerneas is just slower than Lele. But if it's Specs Lele, I'd expect that to be like max speed Lele. Either way, not how I expected the first turn to play out. And Amoongus coming in is like perfect here for me. Um, that probably has Pyopa Berry though, because otherwise why would you switch it in Amoongus? Um, but I think I'm just going to Psy Shock. I'm going to Smart Strike Psy Shock Amoongus, um, because if this is a Specs Lele, then it should switch out. And Amoongus is probably going to want to Spore. Um, I mean, it could go for a Protect, I guess, if it doesn't have the Pyopa Berry. But it, let's say Amoongus doesn't protect here and it has the Pyopa Berry and I get the knockout onto Amoongus, then Lele just comes back out and I just win the game. Um, but maybe it's not Specs Lele. Maybe it's got like Twisted Spoon or Psychic Plate. Either way, I feel like this is 
like you'd want to protect Lele here. And Lele doesn't threaten me too much, especially because I've got the Focus Sash on Cortana. Um, okay, no switch ads, which is interesting. But... Oh, that's annoying. So it doesn't have the Pyopa Berry, but instead it has the uh, Iopa Berry. And that should allow it to survive this Smart Strike as well. Yeah, so that's kind of annoying. Um, we are going to see the Side Shot go into the Lele slot. Should knock me out though, yeah. And a Spore. Okay. Um, given how much damage that did, it definitely looks like Specs. So that's still fine, actually. Um, I'm just going to... Actually, I think it's better just to swap out now. Yeah, and I'll go for a Smart Strike here onto... What do I want to target? Mm. I can see Amoongus switching out. Psyshock's not really pressuring me. But we know Lele is spec, so... Okay, you know what? Let's just stay in with Lele, actually. I don't want to risk falling asleep with Evil Tall. I'm just going to Psyshock and Smart Strike the Cortana. Or sorry, Smart Strike Lele. And Amoongus swaps out, okay into Kyogre. Nice. So, I mean, Cartano is so good in this matchup, I should just be able to knock out Lele here, unless it's got, like, immense bulk to take a smart strike. That could be kind of bad. Um, but taking a turn to sleep here with Lele is also good, because it means more pressure against Kyogre potentially next turn. Smart strike comes out. Okay, gets a knockout. Nice. That should just win us the game, I think, because even if you're Spex Ogre, or sorry, Scarf Ogre, I can just leaf lay the Kyogre, and Amoongus doesn't protect it at all. So I think we should be good here, but Helping Hand Slurpuff definitely kind of caught me off guard uh, with the Spec Psy Shock as well. It was a, kind of a cool way to beat the Xerneas, because I thought like Xerneas just destroys my opponent's team. Um, here I'm going to Psy Shock, and I'm just going to Protect here, just to make sure Amoongus doesn't have anything crazy like Hidden Power Fire. And I want the Free Switch it into Evil Tall as well. Okay, um... It's just gonna water spout, that's fine. And now I bring in Evil Tall. And like Amoongus just doesn't do anything against Cortana. Unless it's got HP fire, so let's see. Nope, he's just grass nodding. Okay, which does like negative damage to Cortana. So I'll bring out Evil Tall. And even if this is Scarf Ogre, like I mentioned, then like all I have to do is Leaf Blade and Oblivion Wing here. Uh, if you're not Scarf Ogre, Oblivion Wing should just knock out Amoongus, and if you are scarfed. Um, then you can't protect, you don't knock out either of my Pokemon, so I think we should be good here. So we didn't get to do anything with Xerneas, and I lost my Restricted immediately, but Cartana is just so good, and my opponent uh, is Scarfed, um, but that shouldn't knock out either, like I mentioned. Yep, brings me down to Sash. Um, so pretty safe play there, and overall my opponent didn't bring the Evil Tall either, so it's like, I, I think Evil Tall actually would have been a real problem had my opponent brought it because of the threat that it plays against my team. Uh, especially if you take care of the Xerneas, because I would have been locked into Psy Shock. Um, now, of course, my opponent didn't know that I was Scarfed. Um, so, yeah. But, like, overall, uh, like, Amoongus was pretty useless here, and that's exactly why I have Lele on this team as well, because Amoongus is, like, one of the most annoying Pokemon to deal with when you're playing with the Xerneas. So, yeah, Slurpuff, definitely an interesting pick. We didn't see really what it does, but obviously my opponent probably likes to lead it with that Lele, so you get that Psychic Seed off. Um, and Helping Hand, definitely kind of interesting. Oh, I wonder what, like, Elsa gets. Um, I, I know, like, when we saw it in 2014, it would use, like, Belly Drum and play rough, but I literally haven't played against a Slurpuff in so long. Um, so, yeah, the Helping Hand Spec Side Shock, definitely kind of cool, but that was a pretty favorable trade. I think it was interesting that my opponent also brought in the Amoongus in front of a Lele instead of the Kyogre, but I guess my opponent could tell a lot of his choice, right? Choice Bexed, or sorry, Scarfed. Um, and so she was probably worried about just uh, water spout damage being reduced significantly right from the start. Um, I feel like I felt pretty confident about that game because in terms of the Pokemon that I brought, like Evil Tall and Cartana were perfect to clean things up. Um, and I mean, that game demonstrated just how good Cartana can be because it didn't have to worry about Amoongus at all. And it's one reason why we've seen some players actually run HP Fire and Amoongus now. It's just like... Picking moves for Amoongus is already tough enough because you obviously want Spore and Rage Powder, and then so you have to decide between like Grass Knot, Protect, Clear Smog, Hidden Power Fire, um, like a combination of those. And like all of those are pretty viable moves as well. 
But so far, pretty good win streak with this team. Um, haven't played it too great, but uh, definitely some solid games. We're going up against another Xerneas Evil Toll team today. Um, we had one yesterday as well. And I think um, Xerneas Evil Toll actually just won in a regional championship in Australia as well. Um, I think that one had like five of the six in Pokemon that I'm running. It just had Tapu Fini over Lele. So yeah, I think it's definitely an archetype that's still very strong. We haven't seen it obviously as much, and it's like we've seen the Kyogre Tornadoes team dominate as well as uh, Ashton and Jeremy's team. Um, but if you're thinking of other strong options, I think Xerneas Evil Toll, you can definitely make a strong case for. Um, okay, this is interesting. So I do have HP Fire on this Lele. I kind of want to just lead Lele and Xerneas. Uh, the only downside is if it's Sash Cortana. I could see, like, uh, Clef and Xerneas coming out from my opponent's end. But my opponent kind of has to lead Lele, because otherwise my Amoongus just threatens my opponent so much. So do I make the call and just lead Amoongus? I do have the Pyopa Berry as well. Hmm. Mm, this is really tough. Let's go Zernamungus, Lele. Do I want Evil Toll? No, I'll bring Cartana instead. I think the priority of this game is to set up my Xerneas. I don't know, I didn't bring Evil Toll because my opponent like doesn't have Amoongus. Uh, Evil Toll doesn't really do much damage. Like I guess I could Snarl away, but the priority should be to set up my Xerneas and then protect it well. Um, although Evil Toll was really important in yesterday's matchup against Xerneas Evil Toll, so maybe I should have brought it. But I'm going to go Amoongus Xerneas, and with the berry, I should be able to take a Psychic-type attack and hopefully get a Spore off. It's going to be Xerneas hit on top, which is kind of annoying because I almost led Lele. Um, it's kind of a surprising lead for my opponent, honestly, but this is still okay. Uh, my Xerneas' Fairy Aura goes off first, which is a really big deal as well. I'm going to switch in Lele here to prevent the Fake Out and just go for a Spore turn 1 into Xerneas. Like, I'm shocked my opponent let this, given that it loses pretty hard to Lele. Um, but it's born to Xerneas, switch into Lele. Worst case is like Xerneas protects and I guess him on top switches out. Um, or I guess taunts coming out. Hmm. Does him on top get taunt? I don't think so, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's like a really reckless play by my opponent. I don't know. Um, I feel like just not considering Lele switching in is, I mean, I'll take it. But yeah, I wanted to lead Lele, um, like Lele Xerneas, which would have been quite nice. But the best thing here is now I just put the Xerneas to sleep and I can just clear Smog it as well to get rid of his boosts immediately. Yeah, so that's good. I think Amoongus here, uh, the question is whether my opponent has got that Kartana in the back. Because I do have Hidden Power Fire. Um, I'm definitely going to clear Smog here. I'm going to hit him Power Fire, actually, because Hitmontop's not doing anything to me right now. It's probably going to want to switch out. If Evil Toll comes out, that's fine, because then I can just Spore it. Uh, it's actually going to be Clef coming out. Okay. That's fine. Um, so I revealed a Hidden Power Fire, but I think that's worth going for, because... Um, so now I get rid of Xerneas' boosts, and it's completely shut down, and I can just Spore everything now. Um, and now I can bring my Xerneas and set up. And that's exactly what I was going for in this mirror match. So, yeah. That's perfect. Spore Clef now. And bring out Xerneas. The, the downside here is Xerneas could wake up and get a Moonblast off against Lele, but um, then I can just Geomancy because I know I'm faster anyway. So it's a little bit risky you know, if my opponent gets a one-turn wake. So let's see if she gets it. Clef protects. Okay, that's a good play. No wake up. That's nice. Sweet. Um, I'm going to Rage Powder Geomancy here because Clef could Encore me. And at this point, I should just be able to win the game with my Xerneas. Because... <laughs> my opponent just forfeits. Um, I mean, I think it would have been really difficult for my opponent to have won that, uh, to have won that one after the beginning of the game. Because my Xerneas just sets up. If I play optimally, like Rage Powder covers everything clef can't really do anything you can like encore i guess but 
even if your Xerneas wakes up, like, I just Dazzling Gleam and win completely with my Xerneas, so... Yeah, that's why I didn't bring Evil Talk, because I figured if I... I could protect my Xerneas well enough with the Lele, um, the Cortana, and the Amoongus, and that worked out perfectly. And that's that's why, like, the Pyapa Berry adds some more insurance for Amoongus, because then you could survive a attack from Lele, potentially, which is a big deal. Um, but, yeah, that was... Definitely pretty scary in team preview, but it worked out all right, ultimately. Um, I just think, like, him on top Xerneas was kind of a questionable lead for my opponent's end, because, like, turn one played exactly how I wanted to. I don't think my opponent even had that many safe options, other than... The best play for my opponent would have been to switch out him on top into Clefairy, so you get the redirection and protect Xerneas turn one. Um, so I think that would have made things a lot more difficult for me, because then the next turn you can just Rage Powder Geomancy. Um, yeah. And then at least, like, there's some more mind games there. But definitely an interesting game. I think uh, my Xerneas being faster also made me feel pretty comfortable. Um, although it's kind of interesting, right? Because I led... What did I lead again? I led Xerneas Amoongus. And my opponent just faked out the Amoongus. So I actually could have just, like, Geomancy with my Xerneas. Um, yeah, one other play I could have made was honestly Geomancy with my Xerneas and sporing my opponent's Xerneas. I don't know why I didn't just go for that outright. Um... Feels like that's actually a pretty solid play as well. Um, okay, another Evil Talk Kyogre team. This one's got a Venusaur, which is pretty interesting. Um, and a Gengar. So I'd be curious to see what those do. Those are actually kind of annoying to go up against. Uh, let's see, how do I want to approach this? Xerneas is still quite good, but it's obviously got to worry about the poison types. Um, Evil Talk's really good here, I think. It's just I'm worried about like physical Coco. I kind of want to lead Lele Evoltal though. I like this lead a lot. Lele Evoltal, uh, Xerneas is definitely the main win con here. Um, hmm. What do I want to support as the last one? You can make a case for all of them, honestly. Instant's kind of tempting because it does wall Gengar and uh, Venusaur pretty well. Amoongus is obviously always good just for redirection, but I can't be sporing uh, things if. Coco sets up the terrain, and Cartana just does get consistent damage off, but it is slower here than most things. I feel like Instant is probably the safest pick, but the thing is, I'm going to be setting up terrain, so if I lose the terrain war, then, I mean, if I win the terrain war, I actually can't fake out. Um, you know what, let's go with Cartana. I'm sashed, so I can guarantee at least an attack off, and Cartana two-shots everything on my opponent's side. Pretty scary comp for sure, though. Um, I think mainly because Xerneas is a little bit harder. Like, Xerneas is so good against Evil Talk Kyogre, but obviously my opponent's supporting, uh, like, has many threats to the Xerneas. Uh, so let's see. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, an instant lead here, uh, which actually could still be kind of annoying. Uh, yeah, it's Incineroar and Gengar. Okay. Well, that's not too bad, I would say. You can't fake out the Lele. And I am Scarfed. Presumably that's Sash Gengar though, which is the scary thing. So the question is whether I want to just switch out my Lele immediately. Hmm. I could be eating a Sludge Bomb or a Shadow Ball. The goal should still be to, to, to set up Xerneas though, so I think I'm just going to go for a Psy Shock. Ooh, I could Ally Switch. I haven't used Ally Switch yet, but that would actually be a pretty cool play to make here. Ally Switch Snarl. I actually really like the idea of that here. Because if you're my opponent, you want to just fake out Evil Tall and Sludge Bomb or Shadow Ball the Lele. So I'm actually going to go for that. And just Snarl here. <laughs> I just also wanted to try it. I don't know if that was the most optimal play, but we don't... Let's see. Oh, he's... Oh, wait. That's... Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, so he didn't fake out there with Incineroar. And Snarl does so much damage there, jeez. So I wonder if that's a knockoff going to the Lele slot. Knockoff would actually be great, because then I can attack. Um, I don't have to be locked in. What? That just knocks me out? Interesting. Uh, okay. Can't say I was expecting that much damage, but that's fine, because I can just bring out Xerneas now. Um, Psy Shock would have worked out better. I thought surely my opponent would have wanted to fake out there, but man, Aura boosted uh, knockoff does so much damage. Jeez. Um, 
I'm gonna take a sludge bomb now, for sure. I'm gonna oblivion wing the Incineroar and Geomancy. Unless this Incineroar does have roar. Um maybe I should have just slash shocked. I didn't think the one I definitely thought fake out was coming out. Um because Evil Tulsh is such a big threat against Gengar. And two, I didn't think a knockoff would knock out my Lele. Uh, so that kind of caught me off guard. Mm, is there anything I could have led better? Wait, why am I faster? Is it Trick Room Gengar? Uh, interesting. Well, now there's like, I'm going to be taking like negative damage. But the, the downside is if, if there's a roar from that Incineroar, which I'm still worried about. Uh, Thunderbolt. Okay. Interesting. Well, if there's no Roar from Incineroar, that should be game over, but... I mean, Roar is a pretty common move on Incin, so... Let's see if he's got it. Do you have Roar? No Roar, okay. Yeah, I think we just win now. Yeah, yeah, that Incineroar is a beast, though. It's doing a lot. Um, yeah, I'll just click Dazzling Gleam now. Who does my opponent have? Kyogre and Evil Toll in the back? Yeah, I mean, Xerneas just wins, I think. I'll just snarl to cover the switch out options and Dazzling Gleam. I don't. The, the Gengar being slower than Xerneas is very weird. Um, but. Yeah, my opponent's rating is a little bit lower, so maybe it doesn't have, like, perfect stats or max speed. Or maybe it's just, like, a bulky Gengar? Either way. Um. Yeah, Flare Blitz actually did so much damage. Like, that might be just max attack in Cinderella. So maybe if my opponent's Gengar was faster and got that Sludge Bomb off, I actually would have fainted with Xerneas. So I did not play this game well at all. Even though, looks like we'll probably win. Um, there's a lot that I could have done better. I don't know, like... Uh, Gengar Instant was actually a really tough lead. Like, my Instant would have been best suited for that. It's going to be Coco and Evil Tull, which is totally fine by me. Um, I'm just going to... I mean, maybe a Sucker Punch knocks out my Evil Tull if it's like Black Glass is boosted. So we're not in the clear by any means. Uh, if I had Instant, we'd definitely be safe, but alas, I don't. I'm gonna Snarl and just Protect. Yeah, my opponent has Black Glass's Sucker Punch, then that knocks out Xerneas, then I might still be screwed. We'll see. Okay, uh, no Sucker Punch, so I might lose Evil Tull here, but that's fine. That's worth... Yeah, I don't even lose it, because Evil Tull is so tanky. Uh, get the Snarl off. Oh, I do risk Tailwind going up on my opponent's end, though. Hmm. Let's see if that actually comes out. Nope, just in the living wing. Okay. Yeah, I didn't play this game well at all. If my opponent, like... Assuming my opponent had a specific set, I actually could have lost this pretty easily, which is not good. Um, just Oblivion Wing and Dazzling. I mean, maybe my opponent does have Sucker Punch though, but the fact that it has Oblivion Wing makes me think probably not. Yeah, I just get the Gleam off. But I didn't play this game well at all, um, even though we're going to end up winning with Xerneas. Uh, let's see, what did I do poorly? Gengar Instant was actually a pretty bad lead for me to go up against because... I guess because the Incinera didn't fake out, then Psyshock and uh, Snarl would have worked out pretty decently. That's like a decent trade for me, because I would trade the Lele for the... And I'll play one more, because we've had some shorter games today. Um, I would have knocked out Gengar and trade for the Lele, and I would have lost my Assault Vest. But then I just get to bring in the Xerneas, and I just set up and win the game. Um, but not knowing my opponent's sets were scary, right? If there's a Roar on the Incineroar, I could be in trouble. If it's Black Glasses... Um, Evil Tall Sucker Punch might have knocked me out. I think the scariest thing, though, was the fact that Flare Blitz did as much damage as it did. I should have expected that, too, because, like, Knockoff just knocked out Lele. So I think that was, like, probably Max Attack Incin or just pretty offensive Incineroar. Um, and had the Gengar not been slower, like, it's supposed... I don't know, like, it, I mean, I feel like Gengar, you really just want max speed. Um, if it just outsped and got the Sludge Bomb off, then Sludge Bomb and Flare Blitz would have just knocked me out, so... Um, yeah, I don't know, that was pretty reckless play by me, um, so I shouldn't have won that one, I just got fortunate that my opponent's Gengar wasn't max speed, for whatever reason, but, uh, yeah, the ally switch would have really worked out nicely had my opponent gone for the fake out like I expected him to, but, 
Yeah, and, and like if the knockoff doesn't knock me out there, then I'm also in a pretty solid spot. But yeah, uh, leading instant might have been better. Obviously, I didn't want to because um, my opponent did have Kyogre in team preview. But yeah, instant does match up really well against Gengar. So I think some pretty interesting stuff today: Slurpuff and Gengar. Not stuff that you see too often. Um, both of them have been pretty annoying too, just because you don't know exactly what they're gonna do, right? Um, all right, we're gonna find Lucky. So I think we're 6-0 with this team so far, which is pretty nice. We'll see if we can jump into the 1700s. Uh, there's an Alolan Muck here, which is interesting, as well as a Sarina. And we've got the typical Zernogre combo. Uh, so how do I want to approach this? Hmm. Wait, how do I even beat Muck? I just don't, right? <laughs> um, my Muck matchup is awful, isn't it? Lele, lead Lele, Amoongus? I think my way to win this is I need to put things to sleep. Uh, primarily the Muck. Uh, Lele, Amoongus. Uh, Lolan Muck, that's such an interesting pick. Uh, maybe Kartana? So the goal is if I knock out Tornadus, then it can't knock me out. I don't. Oh, this is where Alex, which actually could be really huge for me. Um, yeah. I'm going to bring Kurtana because it checks the two Restricteds really well. And it's just so good against this team comp specifically. Don't really want Incineroar. And I, I think I have to keep Evil Toe on the bench here because the Muck is actually a pretty major threat to me. And I can't justify bringing Evil Toe over the other things that I have. Um, but this is a scary looking team. I've got like nothing for Muck. Like, other than Xerneas. Um, and I don't even know, like, I'm sure Muck gets some pretty good tricks too. A gunk Shot is obviously pretty scary and Poison Jab and Knock Off. Uh, it's gonna be Zern, Zern and Tornadus, okay. Oh boy! Oh, what do I want to do? I want to ally switch and Spore because I could see Xerneas switching out into Kyogre and just a Hurricane coming out. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go for the ally switch here. It's too good of a possibility. And like if Xerneas actually switches out into Kyogre and we see the Hurricane come out, that puts me in a really good spot. Uh, the way for me to win this game is to set up my Xerneas um, and to deny my opponent Xerneas from really setting up. So ally switch, while kind of cheeky, like in this position, you're obviously scared of Amoongus. Um, no switch out to Kyogre though. Okay, we could just see like a Tailwind Geomancy, but that's fine. As long as I get the Spore off, that's the most important thing. Yeah, and you just blind Hurricanes. Are you serious? <laughs> Did he call the ally switch? Well, I survive anyway, which is nice. But what? I'm screwed now, actually, because of sub. Uh, I got a double switch here. Oh my goodness, that's madness! I wonder if my opponent just wanted the damage against Lele, expecting to protect. Because like, I feel like Blind Hurricane against Lele is not the most optimal play there. So maybe my opponent just read the ally switch. That. <laughs> that's crazy. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay. Now Geomancy goes up for sure. Huh, no Geomancy. We don't know who's faster, which is also the downside here. I'm definitely smart striking Xerneas. The question is, do I just Geomancy with my Xerneas? Okay, so the thing is, if I Geomancy and I'm faster, uh, that actually puts me in a really good spot. It's just that Tornadus could wake up at this point as well, which is what I'm really scared of. Um, worst case is Tornadus waking up. Do I just play Reckless? I shouldn't play Reckless. But if I protect, I mean, Tornado's just threatening me so much anyway. I'm just going to Geomancy. I just have a feeling I'm faster. Okay, Tornado stays asleep. That's really good. If I get this Geomancy off before my opponent, then we are chilling. Let's see. Man, that was like a great turn one by my opponent. That was a really good play. Ah, oh, it's faster.
Yeah, I mean, obviously I could have protected there. Mm. Yeah, maybe I should have just protected. <laughs> hmm. But if I like, if I protect, then Xerneas also could Geomancy on my opponent's end, um, which is why it's not like a safe play guaranteed. Ah oh, man, the the sub was really what I mean. That was like a perfect turn one by my opponent. It was so well done. Um, my opponent just wakes up and Tailwind protects. I'm screwed. I would need Tornadoes to stay asleep. I I think I lose this now actually. Um, yeah, I just really that was not how I expected turn one to play out. <laughs> Okay, I'm hoping Xerneas protects as Tornadus stays asleep. Okay, switch out is fine, too. If Tornadus stays asleep here, then we have a chance. But not really, because Incineroar comes out and I just lost Xerneas. I shouldn't have played Star Reckless with Xerneas, but I didn't really know what else I could do there. I could switch out, I guess. Um, oh, interesting. Uh, Tornadus is opting to Hurricane here. It wakes up. Is it going to hit it? Getting hit by a blind hurricane is always a feels bad, man. Because if it stays asleep there, my opponent actually doesn't get speed control. Because uh, the tailwind didn't go up because I targeted the uh, tornadoes. I don't lose my sash. Yeah. And I hit myself in confusion, so GG. Um, yeah, this was a tough one, I think. I, I mean, once again, the blind hurricane into Lele is such a call there. Like, wow. My opponent just, I don't know, maybe, I mean, like, obviously, like, attacking Lele for damage is always good as well, but just, like, sheesh. Um, I can't win this anymore, so I'm just going to forfeit. So we do finally take a loss with this team. Um, uh, what could I have done better? Uh, Lead-wise, I don't know. I don't like leading Cortana there. I, 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 I like the lead that I had a lot, honestly, because I put on so much pressure. It's just the fact that Zern did have Substitute and went for it immediately was pretty bad. Um... Yeah, the Hurricane obviously into Amoongus was really bad, and then once the sub went up and I was locked into Ally Switch, I couldn't break my opponent's sub. So had I just, like, Psyshock Spore turn 1, that would have worked out a lot better. Um, I just... Like, surely my opponent must have been worried about Psyshock Spore. Um, and the the fact that the Hurricane went into Amoongus, I mean, that was crazy. But maybe my opponent was thinking, oh, like, your, your Amoongus is definitely threatened right now, so I'm just going to Hurricane into the opposite slot and get some pressure off immediately. But, yeah, something like... Psyshock into Tornadus. Actually, the, the thing is, like, the sub actually puts me in a really bad position regardless, but at least with Psyshock, I can break the sub the following turn. Whereas, because I locked myself in a Scarf Ally switch, I had to switch out Lele. So, had I gone for Psyshock and Spore into Tornadus, that actually would have been so good for me, because, you know, the Hurricane goes into Lele, it survives, Zern subs, but then I can just Psyshock to break the sub, um, and then Amoongus can just Spore everything. So, yeah, the ally switch did not work out because of two things. The sub plus my opponent actually calling uh, or just going for the hurricane into the Lele slot instead of Amoongus, which uh, was a really great, crazy play. Um, and then, yeah, my opponent's earnings being faster was unfortunate as well. I think, I, I don't know if that was a speed tie or how the speeds would have played out, but if I go and get the Geomancy off there first, I survive the Moonblast, uh, the sub is broken, and then I can start clicking Dazzling Gleam. Um, and I'm actually in a pretty good spot, but yeah. Um, I think... I mean, sure, I could have switched out Xerneas there or made some other plays, but uh, I don't know. The fact that Tornadus was already on the timer made me want, like, I saw a window of opportunity, uh, and I think I was probably going to lose anyway if the Xerneas was faster, because if I switch out, like, my opponent just threatens Geomancy still at any point. Um, and obviously, if I protect there was Xerneas, my opponent could also Geomancy. So, uh, yeah, definitely turn one did not work out the way it was supposed to, um, and the sub is something I should have considered heavily on Xerneas as well, because it's obviously very common nowadays. Um, and because of that, I could have made some better plays around that. But yeah, had a chance there to win, but in the end, uh, with Cartana being able to potentially sweep through all my opponent's team, because it was going to get that beast boost, knock out the Tornadus, and then Incineroar can't fake out either. Um, but obviously, yeah, the confusion was unfortunate. But I think my opponent probably had the game won at that point anyway. Um, either way, that was definitely a fun one. All the games were kind of one-sided, I would say. None of them were, like, too crazy. And this last one, uh, that turn one, just truly an incredible call by my opponent. But definitely some fun matches. But, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully we can climb to the 1700s pretty soon with this team. I've had a lot of fun with it. And uh, we'll see how it goes uh, in the next couple of episodes. But thanks for watching. Check out the last one if you haven't seen it. Leave a like if you enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys next time. All right.
Peace.